This is the story of St. George, the Prince of the Martyrs. St. George patiently endured torturing and ridicule for his faith for seven years. Hence, he is known as one of the most remarkable saints in the Coptic Church. St. George was born in the year 280 AD in Cappadocia to God-fearing Christian parents, Anastasius and Theobesti. They raised him to love the faith and the church. His father was a beloved prince governing the province of where they lived. However, St. George's father passed away when he was only 14 years old, and, as a result, his mother moved him and his sisters from Cappadocia to Diospolos, her hometown. St. George would later join the army, and his reputation spread across the land. The prince that had taken Anastasius' place as prince was so pleased with St. George that he asked him to marry his daughter. St. George's fame was so widespread, even the emperor loved his courage and gave him the title of prince. So, St. George is referred to as the Prince of the Martyrs. Later on, St. George's mother, Theobesti, passed away when he was 20 years old. At the same time, the prince who had given his daughter to St. George for marriage also died. While St. George was taking all of this in and preparing to wed his chosen bride, the Archangel Michael appeared to him, ordering him to go before Emperor Diocletian. At this time, Emperor Diocletian had sent a decree ordering the persecution of Christians unless they worshipped his idols. When St. George found out about the Emperor's decree, he was so enraged that he went before the Emperor and shouted, For how long shall you pour your anger against the innocent Christians and force those who know the true faith to adopt the faith that you are in doubt of because it is indeed fraudulent? As a result of St. George's resistance to worshipping the Emperor's fake and lifeless idols, he was greatly tortured. However, after St. George's body had been thrown in jail and left to die, a light shone from above and St. George heard a voice saying, Arise, George, for I am with you in every time and every moment so that you may expose those lying non-believers. I swear by myself as there wasn't among the a woman's babies who was greater than John the Baptist, also there hasn't been among the martyrs someone who is like you. And then the saint arose, standing happily and praising. Emperor Diocletian did not waver in his persistence to convert the mind of St. George. He employed many torturing techniques over the years and tested the power of his God. For example, the emperor brought forth a magician that gave St. George a poisonous drink. The idea was to test St. George's faith in his God against the forces of evil. St. George made the sign of the cross over the cup and then proceeded to drink. When St. George drank from the cup, he remained unharmed and they all marveled. St. George survived his tribulations through fervent prayer and, as a result, 3,700 people converted to the true faith. After countless years of torture, the emperor grew tired of severely torturing the saints and then seeing his body healed by his God. The emperor offered the saint to marry his daughter and therefore inherit an abundance of wealth only if the saint offered incense to idols. So, St. George, pretending to accept the offer, said yes. When the day had arrived, a multitude of people had gathered to watch St. George offer incense to the idols. At that moment, St. George, instead of worshipping the idols, cried out in the name of our Lord Jesus, and the earth opened up and swallowed the idols. The emperor was so humiliated by this that he couldn't bear to look at St. George any longer. So, he ordered the saint beheaded and he received the crown of martyrdom. May his prayers be with us all, and glory be to our God. Amen.